Hi, I'm Dulcie Hill, and I have MS, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the medications I've been on since 1993. Um, the first, uh, when I was diagnosed in 93, uh, Beta-Seron had just, well, it was about to be approved, so I was put into this uh, this situation where I could, I didn't have to go through the lottery, I could take the medication right away. I had a doctor put me on the beta serum and I had flu-like symptoms that were impossible to manage. So he took me off after about uh, two weeks and then we tried to get back on it slowly by um, introducing small amounts at a time and, and I just couldn't get used to beta serum. Uh, that was the, the flu like symptoms were the aches and pains. It, it was just impossible for me. Um, then I went on Copaxone. It was a study group I was on, and my parents were gracious enough to pay to put me on the medication because at the time, in order to be in the study program, uh, you had to uh, pay. So I went to uh, Temple University and I got uh, Copaxone and back then it was called Copolymer 2 and or COP1, excuse me, COP1. So I was on the COP1. Um, I had to inject myself every day and the side effect I had from that was uh, it burned when and it, it burned like crazy when I gave myself these shots. Uh, so I tried to ice, and and that helped a little bit. But uh, after a uh, a short while, it stopped burning. So you do, for me, I got very used to doing those shots. Um, they're small little needles. It, it was easy, and I was on that for years um, until uh, I've lived around. So we moved to Seattle and. Uh, um, I was doing the Copaxone and my MS just, it wasn't holding me. So I went through some bad times there and uh, I was at Swedish Medical Center at that time and my doctor, Dr. Craig Smith, decided to put me on Avonex. And I was shy about going on Avonex because of my experience with beta serum. And uh, he told me that you know, we'll try, and uh, there's very good chance because I had been on beta serum, I uh, and this was a different strand uh, of um, of interferon that I'd be able to tolerate it more. And sure enough, um, I was able to tolerate it. Uh, what was scary was it was an intramuscular injection, so um, it was very long needle, and I'm pretty thin. So uh, I would, I was so afraid of hitting my bone and everything, scared the heck out of me. So what I would do is uh, I would go to this hospital and uh, they would give me the injections. They did that for a few years till I figured out how to get anybody, strangers, my husband, uh, neighbors and all. I'd point and say, this is where you're supposed to give it to me. And they would inject me, and they put, I got my mom, my dad, I got anybody who was in, um, who was willing to stab me, do it. And uh, it worked out very well. I did have to take some pain medication that day, but it was only once a week. So I'd have one bad day out of seven. Avonex worked wonderful, wonderfully for me. Um, and then it stopped working. Uh, but I had been on it for roughly 10 years, uh, then my, my MS started getting out of control. Um, I can talk about attacks, uh, the type of attacks I've had uh, later at another point, but at that point, uh, uh, what uh, my doctor, we had moved to Southern California and I was being treated through uh, University of uh, USC, University of Southern California in Irvine. And I had a doctor there that I won't mention who just, I just don't think he was very good. But uh, he was world renowned and uh, I actually sent my um, neurologist up in Seattle, I sent him an email saying this is my problem. And he recommended that I go on Navantrim. That was the uh, 
IV, it was the chemotherapy, and it was blue, and, and I was scared to death, and, and but I did. I went on it, and... Uh, uh, three times because it does it can affect your heart and I did have a leaky valve so I, I did a course of three cycles and I know you can do it for two years but I did it for three cycles and with those three cycles um, it was amazing that put me in complete remission for a good two years um, I was able to uh, uh, stay on the Avenex while I was doing all that um, so, uh, with the Navantrone, it, it, it was wonderful. Uh, Rebif had been approved at that time, but, uh, I wasn't interested in going back to something, uh, the interferons, because it, the flu-like symptoms were just, I didn't want to have a bad day, and I didn't. I had no problem with the Navantrone, just the color going into my vein was a little scary. Um, USC had the program where they were doing the experimental uh, um, phase of Desabri and Avenex, and I went into that study, um, the double-blind study, so I didn't know what I was getting. Um, later I found out that I got the placebo, uh, and uh, it just put me in a situation that when Desabri was approved, uh, my, uh, we had moved at this point, we moved to uh, Maryland, and I was going to the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, the doctor who gave me the second opinion on my diagnosis, um, uh, Dr. Kate Chuck, at, uh, uh, no, doctor, that was the other doctor, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, Francisco Gonzalez, and he talked me into going on the Tisabri. And I'll tell you what, I was on that for six years, and I loved it. It was once a month, you go in, and they did the IV. I had no side effects. I felt better. Um, and, you know, it just, it really worked for me. No pain, nothing. Uh, I know it works differently for other people, but uh, plus the... Um, the odds of it holding you, uh, keeping you from having an attack, were so high, so much higher than the other ones. Um, but what ended up happening is uh, the JVC test came out. That's, uh, that is to determine whether you're at higher risk of getting that PML disease, the brain disease uh, uh, that could kill you or render you more disabled than you knew you were before. Um, so I got tested uh, for the JVC, and I was positive for it. So between me being positive for it, me being on Navantrone, the chemo, put me at higher risk, and then the third thing, me being on it so long, uh, it was an unacceptable risk that uh, my current doctor, Ed Johns Hopkins, uh, uh, said um, it was too much for him to be comfortable keeping me on. I figured uh, one in a hundred uh, was very good odds, uh, and I wanted to stay on it, but, uh, you know, that's 99% chance everything will be fine, but uh, they were not comfortable with that, so, and that is Dr. Ratchford at uh, Johns Hopkins University. He is just a wonderful doctor to me, um, as was Dr. Craig Smith, i yeah, been able to email both of them with my concerns. Uh, he decided that since he's taken me off to Sabri, um, I was off of it for a while, and then I had a terrible attack. So we were hoping that I wouldn't need to take anything uh, until I had this attack, so we discovered that my MS still was very active. Um, so then he decided he wanted me on Jelenia. Uh, so I, I've been on Jelenia. The first time uh, uh, I took it was about a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. And um, you read the insert and, and the possible side effects. And it's, it's a little scary because when you read that, you think, well, maybe I'm going blind. Maybe, 
you know, you, your brain starts going down a slippery slope of believing you have symptoms that you don't have, um, that I don't have. Uh, so far on Jelenia, I'm doing well. Um, I uh, do have flu-like symptoms, um, but I believe that's from being on those interferons for so long. Uh, none of this is, is proven true or not true, but uh, if, if I don't follow a pain management program with these flu-like symptoms, uh, then I, I don't want to get out of bed. And I'm doing pretty well on this program. Uh, Jeleni, I have to go for my second blood work here in, in a month, and then I have to have my eyes checked for macular edema. Uh, but I'm very good at staying on top of these things. Between that and I really believe eating often and lifting weights and, and trying to use every bit of uh, your mobility, uh, everything you have, I think, uh, just to remind those nerves of what they're supposed to do in case they cure this thing. Um, there's other uh, medications that are supposed to be cure, um, excuse me, approved in in June. So I'm looking forward to that. And they're lower risk ones. Um, I remember 1993, uh, the doctor telling me, um, and that was, uh, gosh, what was his name? I I can't remember off the top of my head, but. Uh, he told me that it was the perfect time to be diagnosed. And I laugh now because I think, no, now's the time, perfect time to be diagnosed. Back then we had medications and, and I'm so grateful that I'm doing as well as I am. But, uh, you know, hopefully they cure it within my lifetime. If not, um, I will continue to send blood samples to people who do research, uh, genetic testing, and you know, there's very few study programs that I haven't volunteered for because I think it's my job um, to try to lend a helping hand to as many people as possible who endure with this disease. But remember, this disease is a challenge. It's, it's not a, a sentence. Um, and if you look at it as an opportunity, uh, you can make your life better with it. Um, and that's all I have to say on that. Uh, I'm Dulcie Hill again, and have a nice day.